Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here with a special type class over here on the Hermes Academy. Normally we teach from the Bible, but today we're going to teach on the Bible. We recently published a class. Um, you may have caught wind of that class. It was talking about the 144,000, the tribulation, and the four paths associated with the tribulation or something like that. And some people who went in and viewed that class were, I believe it was caught a little bit off guard as they thought the uh, end time story was a little bit different. But we was coming from the third testament of the Bible and you can find a um, link to it in the description but the thing about it one of the commenters asked me why do I believe in the third testament of the Bible and he even went as far as to ask me to prove that the third testament was legitimate now I stayed up pretty much all night um, uh, trying to come up with this proof you know I had some conversations with the father and I'm like you know what I should be able to prove it um, I went on to view his comments uh, there were him and another individual I'm sorry I don't have those comments to able to uh, show you here um, 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 I have internet access problems these days but the him and another viewer actually went back and forth and basically what came out of it the the individual world the individual that was the um that started it was saying well i should have some type of proof if i'm saying that it is a legitimate document i should be able to prove it by way of he said revelation or testimony and the other individual that he was going back and forth with was telling him well you should ask the father uh for your proof and i agree with both of them to some degree i agree with both of them uh the one who says he should go to the father to ask for proof i absolutely agree with that you know any scriptural document document that you want to read or or find if it is legitimate or not you can go to the father and he will let you know if that book is legitimate or or not in his own way or maybe in your own way but if you go to him with a sincere prayer asking for him to give you some understanding he will tell you and then the other individual saying that i should have a testimony or revelation or some type of proof i agree with him as well Okay, in order to prove that the Third Testament is real, I'm going to use five different methods to prove that the Third Testament is real. The first method being my testimony. The second one is going to be how the Third Testament was revealed to me. And then the third um, uh, proof that the Third Testament is real is I'm going to use history. I'm going to give you the history of the Third Testament. The fourth method that I'm going to use to prove the uh, Third Testament is legitimate is I'm going to use mathematics coming from the book of Daniel and his 2,300 days. You should find that pretty, really pretty interesting, but that's going to be the fourth method. And then I even have a fifth method to prove that the Third Testament is real. And that's using somebody's testimony who tried to actually disprove it. Somebody who tried to say that it wasn't real and what they found found out when they actually went in to do so all right so as i give my testimony and maybe even the revelations part i'm going to display on the screen the introduction from the third testament book so if you want to you can hit the pause button or you can read it read along as to what the introduction part says so you should be able to gather some information out of that all right let's get into it now, I, I am going to give a bit of my testimony. I do not like talking about myself. Um, I try not to. Um, I, I find it necessary sometimes to do so. Like in today's case is I'm going to go on and tell you how I feel like I am someone who can speak to the legitimacy of the Third Testament of the Bible. And in order to do so, I have to give you a little bit of my background. But like I said, I don't I don't like to do so because, you know, we're supposed to be modest and I don't like speaking on my background. So before I get started with that, I want to make sure you understand that I give the father all credit for everything that I've done in my life I can take the responsibility for none of this stuff that he has allowed me to do and you know he, he has worked with me in my life but again I want to give him all of the credit for it but let me just jump into a little bit of my background really really quickly um, just okay like I said I hate this part but 
I'd have to go all the way back to about 1995, 1996, when I had just got out of the military. Um, I was in the U.S. Army, and I was there on a military base in Washington, D.C., when I met a... Um, a, a chaplain. I met the base chaplain there at, at, at Andrews Air Force Base. Um, she was an attractive uh, lady. I ended up trying to hit on her and before I found out that she was the chaplain and she ended up praying for me. She was like, son, let me come on. Let me, let me pray for you. And in the midst of her prayer, um, she had a bit of a revelation and the spirit touched her a little bit and told her that the um, that there was something going on in my life let me just put it like that and what it what what it boiled down to her, I tried to explain it away I was like yeah I got people praying for me this yeah you know and she was like no 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 um there's something going on and she gave me the instructions very specific instructions even from a military officer to you know a old private like I was and she was like um go to a church she says go to a church and talk to the pastor okay so I did I went to the church and I talked to the um pastor there I ended up joining that church I went down before the uh church there that was Coron Baptist Church in Washington DC and I went down before the church and I gave my confession um and they ended up putting me in a Bible study, a Sunday morning Bible class with Pastor Allen as my instructor. There was three of us that was in that class. We was all brand new. And he, the pastor of the church, was our instructor. And there was three things he told us to do. He said he needed for us to get baptized. Now, my first thing was I'd already been baptized. I had got baptized when I was 16, 17 years old. But he was like, I need for you to do it again. Uh, and then he said, I need for you to fast for seven days and read the book of Proverbs. So I did all three. Um, I started fasting and I started reading the book of Proverbs. Um, I had to uh, cheat a little bit reading the book of Proverbs. I wanted to read the King James Version of Proverbs for some reason, but I couldn't understand the these and the thous and all of that stuff. So what I did was I set side by side the King James Version and a New International Version, I believe it was, and I went through the book of Proverbs reading one verse at a time from each different books until I was able to understand the King James language. By the time I finished Proverbs, I was able to read King James with no problem. But then the thing is, I went on to read um, from the book of Matthew. I jumped from Proverbs on my own without any instruction. I went to the book of Matthew and I should say from the instruction of the Holy Spirit because I read from Matthew all the way to the end of Revelations. OK, so I read the whole New Testament um, of, of the scripture. Now, up until that point, I wasn't really a church guy or anything like that. But anyway, um I ended up going to church after I read that because I felt like I had something to say after I read the New Testament of the Bible. I felt like I was um, ready to start teaching. I actually did. I ended up uh, teaching in a church or two, um, teaching Sunday school and that kind of thing with only the New Testament knowledge under my belt. Now, fast forward to 1998. After um, I had been through a few things, I had decided that I was going to read the new, t the, uh, I decided I was going to read the Old Testament into some audio tapes. I, yeah, I, I went and bought me some audio tapes and I thought I was going to read the whole Old Testament. So I ended up starting there in Genesis chapter 1, reading out loud until I ran out of my little white cassette tapes that we had back there in 1998. But I decided that it wasn't that good of a recording anyway and I needed practice. So I kept going I, from Genesis all the way through to Revelations. Now, mind you, that's the second time through the New Testament. And after that, I started over again and read again from the book of Genesis all the way through 
to Revelations. That is my second time all the way through. And then what do you know, I actually started again to read from Genesis, this time with the idea that I was going to read out loud. And I did down in D.C., down in Baltimore and different places. I would be on the streets and the homeless shelters, on the buses and the trains, wherever I was going. I was reading out loud from Genesis all the way through. Uh, this time I was going to go to Revelations as well. But while I was reading in a homeless shelter one night, right close to the end of the Old Testament, an individual asked me to read. He asked me, he told me that he wanted to help me read. Um, and I, you know, I agreed and we ended up getting into a bit of altercation because he wouldn't follow my rules of reading. You know, I, I wasn't real modest back then. And I, I explained the rules that, you know, we had to read one chapter at a time. By then I had learned that in order to read the scripture, you had to read read the whole chapter or you would get lost and so um, I explained that to him but as he would read like one verse he would start preaching and then we kind of got into a bit of a um, I don't want to say an argument there was just I kept cutting him off and I was like oh wait 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 you have to um, read finish the whole chapter and then you could talk about it all you want well he got mad he got angry and he stood up and he said you know what you don't know anything about the Bible he said you come in here reading this Bible as if you know something about the Bible but you don't really know anything about the Bible he said you don't even know about the Dead Sea Scrolls you don't know about the lost books of the Bible you don't know about the forgotten books of Eden and he named some more now I stood up at that point and I said those books do not exist I said you're making stuff up those books do not exist and we were amongst a lot of people and he looked around at those other people and laughed at me and said ha 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 I told you he didn't know nothing okay this was that that night the next day I went to the library and I asked the librarian where was these books that he was talking about these locks books of the Bible and these forgotten books of Eden well she directed me to the section where these books were I went to the shelf I pulled off the locks lost books of the Bible and the forgotten books of Eden I set it down on the library table I opened it up to the first book of the Bible which was I think it was called Mary or something like that uh, and I started reading and I read that whole book of Mary is similar to you have the 66 books in our Bible so it, this was another volume of books. It had 20 or 30 or 40 books in it. I can't remember. But I read the first one out of the books book and I was completely convinced that it was scripture. I knew scripture at that point. I had been through the Bible three times because you remember I had already read the New Testament at first. And so I had been through the Old Testament three times and I had been through the, the New Testament three times. So I knew what the scripture was about. I knew what it was saying. I could recognize scripture. I felt like I, I knew what was scripture and what wasn't because I understood the story. I understood where the father was coming from and what he meant. And so when I read the book of Mary, I was 100 percent convinced that that was scriptural that I was reading. I ended up checking out that book, that volume of books, and I read it. The old is called the. Uh, forgotten books when is it it's called the lost books of the Bible and the forgotten books of Eden I read through that volume of books it took me eight days to read through it and then just like before I started reading it again and then probably even again I can't remember if I read it a third time or not but after that I went back to that library and I read the Apocrypha the Apocrypha that you hear about I went and found the Dead Sea Scrolls and I read those and I read every other scriptural document they had in the library now mind you at these times I was um um, by my own choice in homelessness and I was in some other places that I was able to spend about 16 hours of my day reading and that's what I did I read all of those scriptural documents okay so that's my background on why I feel like I can speak and say that um, the third testament is legitimate because um, Basically, I didn't read every scriptural document there is, you know, I've read um, the Mormon's Bible. I've, I've even read half of the Koran. You know, I did have a problem when they start talking about cutting Christians head off and that kind of thing. So I kind of stopped reading it. But I, I did make it at least halfway through the Koran. So, you know, other other than that, I've read just about every other scriptural document known to man. And I believe that's why I can speak to the Third Testament and say that it is 100 percent legitimate.
Okay, so that's the background part of the story. Now let me tell you how I came to find out about the Third Testament of the, of the Bible. So this will be part two of this proof video. Um, <clears throat> Okay, so now fast forward all the way up to about 2017. Now, by 2017, um, I had already been through engineering school there at Auburn University. I had already got an engineering degree, electrical engineering degree, as well as a master of science degree. Praise the Lord. I, like I said, I give him credit for everything I've ever done. And I had worked in... A, um, the nuclear power industry for a number of years but back in 2014 I had started started to get concerned um, about the mark of the beast believe it or not and I started to question the father how was I going to escape the mark of the beast I mean I'm no different than anybody else around me everybody else is shopping at Walmart I shop at Walmart they're spending money I'm spending money I buy and sell just like they buy and sell what is making me different how am I different than anybody else around me when it comes to the market of beast well praise the father who already had a plan in hand I was separated from my daily responsibilities at that time given the opportunity to come back to this homestead area that I am on now where I get to serve the father with all of my time we run a homestead here but you know with the rest of my time we get to make videos and do other stuff all right so going back to 2017, even before we had got Hermes Academy up and going uh, on, on YouTube, I was struggling uh, as far as my ministry was concerned. I knew that I was supposed to be doing something as far as ministry, but I could not find out where it was. I thought I was supposed to be in the churches and doing that kind of thing, and I was trying my best to get my foothold in the churches, and I was being rejected by every church that I went in, and I didn't understand why. I was also being rejected by my family and my friends. If you've seen some of our videos, um, you know what I'm talking about is, as far as the uh, rejection that we you have to go through when you're on this path that, that I'm on. And so I was going through that kind of stuff and I wasn't really understanding why what was going on and why it was going on. A lot of people can attest to that, that, you know, it's, it's, it's pretty rough when, when, you know, everybody turns on you or whatever and you have no answers. So I was going through that. In the earlier part of 2018, I found myself on the bathroom floor crying. Yep, I was there on the floor and I was crying to the Father, why is this happening to me? Why is all of this bad stuff happening to me? And, you know, I would do this often. I, I would wait till my family went to sleep and while, you know, nobody, you know, was around. And I would go to a secluded place and, you know, basically just, just cry because I didn't understand what all was going on with me. But on one faithful night, as I was praying why 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 and I was asking the father who am I I remember I remember um, asking him that question directly who am I and the next morning I, I think I dreamed about it or something like that but the next morning I woke up with 144,000 on my heart now, this is why I hate to tell these kind of stories. I believe I get in trouble for this kind of stuff. But I went into YouTube and I put in 144000. I started seeing YouTube videos on the 144,000. Now, up until that point, I had only read about it in Revelations. Um, I didn't know anything about these guys except they were supposed to be virgins or whatever. And they were supposed to do all of these other stuff. But I never knew who they were, what they were, or anything like that. And so I didn't really understand why I was putting 144,000 into YouTube. But the thing about it. Uh, I started hearing information that I had never heard of before about this 144,000 and it was given verses that I hadn't heard before and the thing about it and you, you guys have seen these videos if you've done any any searches for the 144,000 you've seen the videos that I'm talking about and they were putting verses up on the screen now me and at that point I was even calling myself a Bible expert or a connoisseur of the scripture or something like that um 
and and but these scripture that was coming up on the screen they did not they they felt familiar they touched my heart and made me feel like you know i i should have known what they were but i couldn't find them anywhere in my books you know i have at this point i had a um library of books that all of the books that i've read i've actually tried to collect them over the years and so i started going through all of the books that i had on the shelf and i could not find these scriptures anywhere that was being talked about in these videos Videos that I was watching so praise the Lord you know um, I actually paused the video um, with the scripture up there on the screen and I actually start typing out in Google the verse that was actually up there on the screen I just typed it out word for word pushed to enter and what do you know a website popped up Jesus comes dot com and a PDF of what's called the Third Testament of the Bible came up on the screen. This was the very first time I had heard of such a thing, the Third Testament of the Bible. And I was quite amazed because I had not heard of it before, but I actually started reading it, uh, um, started reading some of it. <clears throat> And then I even went as far as to go back to YouTube and look for an audio book on the Third Testament of the Bible because I had been getting used to the idea of lifting into audio books by then. And so I went back to YouTube hoping that they had an audio book of the Third Testament of the Bible. And turns out they did have an audio book of the Third Testament of the Bible. Now this was about... Um, um, March, February or March of 2017. I remember that because we were coming up on the Feast of Unleavened Bread and I said, you know what? I'm going to download all of these MP3s for the Third Testament of the Bible and I'm going to spend the whole week-long Feast of Unleavened Bread listening to the Third Testament of the Bible and that is exactly what I did. For one week, I went through what I believe to be the marriage supper as I became acquainted with the third testament of the bible and it blew my mind the level of information that was in there the understanding that i was able to gain from that book related to the old testament and the new testament it was a wealth of information it was the spirit and truth that we had been promised and i knew it i knew it at that point all right so <clears throat> That I'm going to call the second part of this proof video. We're going to call that the revelation. He said I needed a testimony and I needed a revelation. Or how, okay, now I'm a, I don't know if that counts, but we're going to put that down there. All right, so now let's get into the third part of this um, proof video. Now, as I mentioned uh, fleetingly in my testimony, I have a degree in engineering. So proof to me means something a little bit different. When you tell somebody to prove something, um, it actually takes on a whole new meaning when you're talking to an engineer. We need numbers in order to prove something. Like I've told people you know, in my life, there's only two things that I believe in. That's scripture and mathematics. Those are the only two things that will not lie to you. There's scripture and um, numbers they never lie two plus two is always going to equal four all right so let's use some numbers in order to prove the third testament of the bible all right now bear with me for a little while this is all brand new information that the father has given me um i've been working on it for a while but i had never gotten it quite right until this individual asked me to prove that the third testament was legitimate here in the last few days and i prayed about it and then the father had gave the father gave me some answers to some stuff that i had been working on for a while all right so bear with me for a little while as i run through this as quickly as i can all right now we're over here in the third testament of the bible and i'm gonna go through uh like uh, one of them smart guys say start with the end in mind so i'm gonna jump all the way down here to chapter two of the third testament of the bible and i'm gonna show you guys something all right now this is coming out of chapter 2 of the Third Testament of the Bible. If you read the uh, introduction, you can find out about this guy named Ro Roges, um, who who basically started this. But and Ro Roges was um, he was um, the reincarnate of the Elijah spirit. We can get into detail about him and you know how he was. Um, 
or like I said, the third testament itself tells you about how Elijah came into this guy named Rove Rogers' life. But I'm gonna tell you that the this guy Rove Rogers, he was kind of like a John the Baptist. You know that Elijah always comes first, and just like John the Baptist came before the Messiah, and this Rove Rogers individual, he was um he was the John the Baptist of the third era. And again, I tell you, this is brand new information. So the guys who have put this information out this book out the ones even over there on some of the other websites they're going to be unfamiliar with this information that i'm about to share with you but they should be quite surprised if they pray on and they think about it and, and try to understand what i'm what i'm trying to tell you right here all right so coming down here verse 5 says do you remember that cloud in which my disciples saw me ascend the last time that I manifest myself to them in truth it was written that I would come again in a cloud and this I have fulfilled then it goes on to say on the 1st of September 1866 my Spirit came in a symbolic cloud to prepare you to receive my new lesson. Now, I'm going to slow down right there because it's talking about this road road, this individual. And when it says the first day of September, um, it's not really talking about the Gregorian calendar. If you remember right, if you remember the SEPT of September means seven. So what it's trying to tell you is the seventh month. And if you know your... Um, your uh, mosaic law if you know about the statutes you know that the first day of the seventh month is the day of trumpets so during the first day of the uh, seventh month or the day of trumpets of 1866 was when this individual named Ro Rogers actually um, um, received uh, the the Holy Spirit or, or or you know had some type of um, 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 contact with the father let me just put it like that i'm not sure how to explain it like i said this is kind of new uh, information i'm not repeating information you know that you know somebody else has hashed out um and uh you know so um you have to bear with me a little while but this right here i want to bring out right here it says later in 1884 i began to give you my teachings and this right here is the important date right here 1884 and this right here is what I'm going to use to prove that this third testament is legitimate this 1884 just to give you a little bit of, of the story of what's going, what what happened here, this Ro Rogers individual, he started getting divine inspirations by way of the Elijah Spirit back then in 1866. And he started working with individuals, same way John the Baptist did, except Ro Rogers, he started he started with another following of um I can't remember how many people, but he started off with these seven women who were included in this slightly larger group of people and he named them the seven seals and then it came time in 1869 during the feast of tabernacles or atonement day he was expecting these individuals to uh, be better prepared than he actually was in 1869 and he wrote Rogers, who had started this movement actually was greatly disappointed in them during eight in 1869 and he got angry with them and destroyed all of the writings that he had received Received up until that point, he closed the meeting place that he had and basically just just destroyed everything. He basically just had a falling out from, you know, because people wasn't meeting what he thought was his expectations or whatever. But there was one individual, this one lady named. Uh, let me jump over there to her right quick. This this one lady that he had in his group, her name was Damiana Oviedo. She was one of the seven individuals that Ro Rogers had worked with before. He had named her the sixth seal. He had seven of them that he had named the seven seals. But this one, Damiano uh, Oviedo. She um, was pretty much the only one that stayed faithful and tried to learn and actually work with uh, what she was given there. And so when Ro Rogers had his conniption fit and crashed and burned, this lady, uh, Oviedo, she actually picked up the pieces of what he had tried to destroy and carried on with it using his same uh, meeting places even after uh, Ro Rogers had died and this Oviedo had 
had continued to meet uh, and, and go through um, um, tried to carry on what the Road Rogers individual had started. Now I'm getting this from a website uh, 144.net forward slash tag forward slash Damiano Oviedo so you guys could go over there and read about this um, here it is talking about this a little bit about this rogue Rogers individual you can find out about him uh, like right here it says in 1869 rogue Rogers prepared in advance a solemn act to commemorate the passion of the Lord Jesus so he was ready to put on a show there in uh, 1869 but then it kind of crashed and burned and then you see right here this Damiano Aviedo gathered the fragments of what uh, rogue Rogers had destroyed there and started to carry on right there it talks about how uh, Rose Rogers died in 1879 but look at this part right here it says in May of 1884 you see that this uh, Damiana started receiving a what's called a divine ray which was inspirations from the father and she started getting these teachings Okay, now here's what these teachings look like coming from the Great Book of Life. Now, these are very long. Let me blow it up a little bit so we can see it. Um, there's some contact information right there. If you guys are interested in that kind of stuff, hit the pause button and get it. And you look, and it looks just like the Third Testament of the Bible. It has the same information from the Third Testament of the Bible. It just has more of it. It has a lot more of it. And I've gone through and read at least these first few teachings out of here. And it, it when and so I understand how the Third Testament was created. Um, when you read the, the the instruction or lead read the introduction to the Third Testament of the Bible, it tells you that they basically took this um it took these teachings um, and from these teachings they categorized them into groups like when you're looking in the third testament of the bible we have a, a chapter called the dawn of the second coming or the second era you have a chapter called the forces of good and evil you have a chapter called guilt and penitence trials and sufferings well they went through all of these teachings and found everything associated with guilt and penitence trials and sufferings and then put them in those categories and that's what we have as the third testament of the bible and so when you are looking at the third testament of the bible let me jump back over there and look show you right quick at the end of each one of these small sections you have these numbers here this is saying that it's come from teaching 236 and it's verses 46 through 50 now let me let me find one from a teaching that we actually have to show you exactly what i'm talking about OK, so now this one right here is uh, say it's coming from teaching one verses six through nine. So I'll let you see that those three verses, maybe. It actually will start all the way up there with this Roe Rogers individual. And so that will be uh, verse six up there. And then by the time you get all the way down to this number right here, it's going to be number nine. So let's jump back over here. And there it is, six through nine. So you come to teaching one. Let me show you that again in case you missed it. Right there, teaching one. And when you look at six through nine, you're going to see the exact same verse written word for word. It's going to be the exact same words there. Now, the thing about it, these, these, um, this great book of life, this is just one teaching. It's These things make up, I'm, I'm guessing about, 10,000 pages of documents just like this and the thing about it it repeats itself often it says the same thing over and over you can imagine she was getting these teachings by divine inspiration and so she was repeating herself a lot and you can imagine if you're trying to read 10,000 pages of documents and you're seeing duplicates of what you had read before it's going to kind of is going to kind of wear on you a little bit and so I can see how they compress this down to what we call the third testament of the Bible
All right, so now we're going to wrap that part up as the third level of truth. We, that's the third part or the second part of this uh, proof that the third that the third testament is legitimate. But don't, but wait, don't wait. Don't go yet. I got even more proof that the third testament is legitimate. First of all, I'm going to call my wife in. Come on, Stace. Grab the microphone. All right, let's hear your testimony as far as the third testament of the Bible. I, I, I did catch her off guard, y'all. She wasn't prepared. But, you know, like I said in my last video, I like catching people off guard. Um, My testimony with the Third Testament came when um, I was introduced to it uh, by just hearing you uh, being, talking about it a lot. Um, hearing you reading it, going into, uh, like, seclusion and just constantly meditating on it and so you began telling me about it and just out of pure curiosity you know I um, wanted to learn more about it but I also wanted to disprove it because I didn't believe that there could be another book of the Bible and I, I never heard of it uh, so I just thought it was completely false. So I um, picked it up and started reading it for myself. Okay. And once I did, everything fell in place. Everything that I had read, everything that I had studied, everything that I had heard and learned from uh, you um, just fell into place. I mean, it started talking about the spirit to spirit communication with the father I started practicing it um, and it's believe it or not to my I guess dismay or to my unbelief didn't think it was going to happen everything started falling into place what it said started happening I learned to pray I learned that um, we could heal I learned that we could uh, have spirit, spirit to spirit communication with the father and it just started working. Everything that the Third Testament said about this spirit to spirit walk with the Father, how to have um, communication with Him, how to get to or through this path of righteousness, um, I started learning it and everything fell in place for me. Well, you said two two things you could use as an example. One, you said something about prayer. So the Third Testament taught you how to pray. What do you mean? Um, the Third Testament taught me how to pray. Um, through the ter Third Testament, I learned that there were several steps or several ways um, that I could communicate with the Father. That by um, making a request, asking. Um, through admiration of the Father, um, through um, intercessory, intercessory prayer, and contemplation. And I learned that all through, th through the Third Testament. So did your, did, you, did your prayers start being answered or something like My that? My prayers not only started being answered, but, but I learning how to talk to the Father, it was, it was as if I could... Um, and I know this might sound crazy, but hear or feel him speaking back to me. Okay. Um, it just, everything just made sense. Now, you said something about healing. Did the Third Testament teach you how to heal people? Um, it taught me that healing, the Father could use us to heal people. He, of course, do the healing, but he uses our hands and he uses our voice and he uses um, us to heal and we have seen people healed just you know by the father teaching us how to do the steps teaching us what has to be done to heal people okay. it talks you know the third testament it not only talks about spirit to spirit but it talks about the law it talks about the old testament it talks about the new testament and everything that it says is backed up with the old testament the New Testament, and, you know, it just falls in place with the Third Testament. So everything lines up. Everything lines up. I have not read not one thing. And this is from someone who read it to try to disprove it. Yeah. Um, I tried to disprove that it was wrong, 
And everything that I have read, everything that I've studied, I mean, I when I study, I look up every word from words from uh, nevertheless yeah. to everything. I studied it and I have not found not one thing to make me believe that. Um, you haven't found one contradiction. One contradiction. That's the word that I was looking for. I haven't found not one contradiction. All right. All right. So you 100% true, 100%, you, you, you believe it 100%. I believe Third Testament 100%. I believe it just as much as I believe the the First Testament, the Second Testament. I believe the Third Testament to be the undoubtedly words of the Father uh, for us. All right. I have no doubt. <laughs> All right. Those are bold words. All right, guys. And I, I, I will... I share her sentiments, you know, it all lines up, you know, uh, my wife has read uh, most of the scripture and she hasn't found any contradictions. But like I said, I've read all of it. I've read everything and I haven't found any contradictions there. Any, anything that even makes you raise doubts, you, you, you can you can go back and it gives you enough information to where you can understand where people like Paul might might or people like John may have had a hard time interpreting what he was saying. Even the Third Testament makes revelations make sense is what I'm trying to say. All right. So, guys, I'm going to go ahead and leave it there. I can't think of anything else that I can share with you by way of proof. So if you if you, if you are convinced, go ahead and hit the like button. If you still have doubts about it, go ahead and send us a comment or something and 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 uh maybe we can maybe there's something we can help you clear up. If you uh believe what we're saying is not right, go ahead and hit the dislike button, but you know, pray for us. Pray for understanding. Pray for the Father's will. Shalom.